Hey guys, Danny Weshi here in the Tropical Room, and today we're talking aquatic plants. But before we get started, don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends. Leave me a comment to tell me what you think and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss when I post any videos. Now let's get going. So the question of the day is, can you use hydroponic fertilizers in your fish tank? And the answer is a little bit more complicated than just yes or no. Before we can talk about whether or not you can actually use the fertilizers, we have to talk about what fertilizers plants actually need to grow. So about 45% of what our plants are made out of is carbon. But they're also made out of a whole lot of other stuff too. Now there's two different types of nutrient um, categories. We'll say we have your macronutrients and your micronutrients. Now, this has nothing to do with the size of the nutrients themselves, but it has to do with how much of the nutrient your plants actually use. So your macronutrients are making up 96% of what your plants are made out of, whereas your micronutrients make up the remaining 4%. They're still important, but they don't use them as much. Same as the light spectrum where your plants use mostly red and blue, but they do in fact use a little bit of green light. It's not completely irrelevant. So full spectrum lights will get you your best growth. Now, your macronutrients, the 96% of what your plants are made out of is, you know, carbon and then nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. That's mainly what our plants are made out of. There's also iron, chlorine, boron, manganese, zinc, and molybdenum. Now, some of these fertilizers that we use in our terrestrial plants or in hydroponic systems are not necessarily fish safe. A lot of them contain ammonium, you know, because plants do use ammonia. Like I said earlier, they use chlorine as well. So, you know, we all know that chlorine is bad for your fish tank. Ammonia is bad for your fish tank. It's going to kill your fish. It's toxic. But your plants use it. So that's, you know, one of the good benefits of having, you know, a nice planted tank too. So when we're looking at the fertilizers that we use, we have to make sure that they are fish safe. But not just fish safe, we also need them to be shrimp and snail safe. Fish can stand, you know, low levels of copper and stuff like that in their environment. But shrimp and snails can't. Some common fertilizer ingredients that are harmful to fish are, you know, cobalt, copper, ammonia and ammonium and there's also some others but those are the main ones and the most common ones in fertilizers that you'll see and also lots of different fertilizers just contain super high levels of nitrogen and phosphates and phosphorus and all that to where they're harmful to fish too so it's very important to look at not just the chemicals but also the levels that are on there as well. You definitely don't want anything that's too high of levels 
And if you do use those high of levels, you have to use very, very, very little of the fertilizer. So you might have a different brand of hydroponic fertilizers than I do. I just happen to have these from General Hydroponics. I didn't intend on getting these. There was some mix up with an Amazon shipment and a friend of mine just was told, go ahead and keep them. And they gave them to me because, you know, I grow a lot of plants and you can even use these in terrestrial plants, you know, when you're watering and stuff like that. But so we talked about how your plants need calcium and magnesium. So that's the very first one that we have right here. So if we look on the back of this bottle, we can see it has nitrogen, calcium, magnesium, and iron. That's derived from calcium glucoheptanate, calcium nitrate, iron DTPA, which is just a fancy way of saying iron that's dissolved into a liquid using acid, and magnesium nitrate. So this bottle in itself doesn't contain any of those hazardous words, you know, the words that we're scared of, the ammonia, uh, you know, the coppers, the, the harmful sorts of ingredients. This one is totally fine, totally able to be used in your aquarium. It's safe. Now let's move on to the Flora Bloom right here. As we can see, this bottle has already gotten a whole lot more complicated. It's got phosphates, potash, magnesium, sulfur, which is derived from magnesium carbonate, magnesium phosphate, magnesium sulfate, phosphoric acid, potassium carbonate, monopotassium phosphate, and potassium sulfate. We see that word phosphoric acid, but the term acid isn't necessarily anything scary. It may drop your pH a little bit, but you know, you're not using high levels of this. You're using very little in your aquarium at all because this is highly concentrated. So this one is also safe. You know, it's got those basic building blocks for your plants, but nothing that's really, you know, standing out that is just like, okay, I can't use this at all. But then we have these next two bottles right here, Flora Grow and Flora Micro. Like I said, yours might be totally different than what I have. That's just the brand that I'm using right here. But if we look at this one right here, it's got so much going on here. Nitrogen, phosphate, potash, magnesium. That in itself does not look that scary. But when you look at what it's derived from, Ammonium nitrate, ammonium phosphate, ammonium sulfate, magnesium carbonate, you know, back to the magnesiums and the other uh, things that we've already talked about, but those ammoniums, that's not going to be good for your fish. Ammonium is one of the things that we use water conditioner to get rid of. Um, you know, if you're throwing that directly into your tank, it's going to break apart and turn into ammonia and you're going to have some really bad issues with your tank. Same with this Flora Micro over here. It's got so much stuff, you know, the, the things that are great for your plants. Boron, cobalt, copper, iron, great ingredients. But that cobalt, that copper, that's going to really cause some major problems with what you got going on. And it's derived from ammonium mol molybdate, ammonium nitrate, calcium carbonate, calcium nitrate, cobalt nitrate, copper EDTA, iron DTPA, like all these different things in there that we know are great for your plants, but they're not great for your fish. So that's what it really comes down to. So guys, if you really want to learn more about the in-depth science behind what your plants use as far as nutrients and what is the levels and everything that you need to properly grow each and every individual plant and all that stuff, I definitely suggest checking out Bentley Pasco here on YouTube if you haven't checked him out already. He's got some really good information on both the nutrients 
and the light levels that you need. So definitely check them out. So what we learned so far is that, you know, this one is good, this one is good, but these two over here are not safe. They have the ammoniums and the stuff in there that's going to break down and cause some serious problems for your fish. You really don't want to use those over here, but these two are safe. So let me show you how I've been dosing this tank, and you can see that my plants are very happy. This tank gets a water change every two weeks. And every week, I give it a little dose of fertilizer. And you can see that the plants are doing fantastic. Yeah, there's a little bit of algae growth on the glass. You can see it. I don't even wipe it away. Everybody takes care of it. The snails, the bristle nose, and... Then just, you know, maintaining the water change levels and the nutrient levels, you, you don't get as much algae growth. So every two weeks I water change. Nice big, you know, 30-40% water change. And I dose, you know, once a week. What I do is just, you know, reach in with this little cup here and just get myself a little bit of tank water. I'll grab the Cali Magic first and just add a little bit. Just kind of change the color to a little bit of that yellow. Because I'm just wanting to make sure that there's the nutrients in the tank. I'm not trying to do any potential overdosing or anything like that. And then just add a little bit of that floor bloom to bring it to that nice kind of a, almost like a grapefruit sort of color, I think. Kind of a pinkish orange sort of color. And just mix it around a little bit with the lid. And then I'll just take it and kind of spread it across that way and just let it mix in so in short to answer the question can you use hydroponic fertilizers in your fish tank the answer is yes and no it depends on what's in those hydroponic fertilizers I really hope you enjoyed this video I hope you learned something as well. I know I learned something in the research that I did about these fertilizers, and I hope I shared enough of that with you. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time. If you haven't already, be sure to like this video and leave me a comment, and subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you next time.